And we're back! Welcome back to Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo. In the last episode, Buddy and Wu- Buddy and Wuz. <laughs> Hello! Where's my brain at? Not here, evidently. Probably out in space as much as Buzz is gonna be in a little bit. Yeah, this is based on the scene in the movie where they both become lost toys, like they get separated. Woody catches the plan to kind of sneak them back into the pizza planet by disguising themselves as just kind of like discarded uh, cups and like burger boxes and everything, which is actually quite clever. This stage, however, is kind of a bastard. Like there's, there is a ridiculous amount of abandoned food in this place. Look, there's hot dogs and fries that people have left on every goddamn table everywhere. And the worst part is you have to keep moving. You have to keep moving forward because Buzz can run into you behind you and I think it does damage. I am not even kidding. Remember that one little bit where he bumps into the back of him and like the top of the cup is opening like it's talking? Watch where you're going. Sorry. <laughs> it's like a little shadow puppet thing. Yeah, that's an actual... They turn that little th sight gag into an entire mechanic in this level. Buzz is constantly following behind you. And worse, you need to hold down here in order to hide yourself if you see a paper airplane going by. Because it'll soon be followed by a kid. And if that kid sees you moving, your cover as a toy will be blown. I think that's instant death. Luckily, the timing on this is extremely forgiving. Like, if you wait till the kid is already passed, even if his legs are still on screen, you'll still be okay. So that's realistic. That's intuitive. That makes sense. Ah, oh, those... Those cans, by the way, those are also another pain in the ass. Because... Once again, the hitbox is kind of weird. It's so gigantic that you might get hit even though you think the danger is already passed. So yeah, just kind of move as fast as you can. Try to avoid stopping as much as you can. But to be fair, Buzz also stops when a kid is going by. So you have a little bit of leeway in that sense. There we go. This is not, this is by far not the worst stage in the entire game. Oh no. Not even the one that's coming after this. The one that comes after this is also a pain in the ass, but it's still not as bad as what comes directly after it. Ladies and gentlemen, Pizza Planet has the worst, the two worst stages in the game, back to back pretty much. This is not one of them, but the one we're about to enter is. Ooh, extra life. Not bad at all. So now they, Buzz sneaks into the rocket ship because, you know, Buzz Lightyear, he thinks it's going to take him back to Star Command. When in fact, he doesn't realize that it's a vending machine. So Woody is now climbing through this thing to try and find his pal, and he has to try and get through all of the inner mechanisms of the machine. This stage, it's, well, it's like I said, it's one of the worst stages in the game, but you kind of have to, if you practice enough at it, you can get good at it. Like, here's what a lot of people don't realize. This is the main mechanic of this area, is this are these moving sort of platforms. You have to wait for... It's that same platform that keeps going up through the whole thing. Let me just re-illustrate this real quick. You're following this platform right here the whole way up. So what you have to do, it's going to disappear into this left wall for a while. It took me so long to figure, it, figure this out, which is why I'm spending a little time on it. You want to ride it for as long as possible so you have time to react to it coming back out of the wall. Just kind of stand on those disappearing ones real quick so you have time to actually get up there. Okay, that's the first hurdle you have to get over. But now you got new problems. Now you have to deal with... Um... What is it? Well, you've got the coins coming down through the tubes here. And that's a lot of freaking coins, I must say. People can't possibly want to play the game that badly. Jeez. Gotta time this. Oh, I got nailed. 
There's no space in between those two pores, by the way, as you might have noticed. So you just kind of have to run for it. You have to time that absolutely perfectly. Like, one pour is easy enough. You can slip by that pretty easily without getting hit. I also like how in this game they actually bothered to have an effect where the coin bounces off of Woody's head if it hits him. Like, you can actually see the coin still flying in the environment. I'm not going to intentionally show that off. Like I said before, I need all the hits I can get. Because one other thing I haven't talked about, this game, yeah, the, the continues are there for a reason. You don't get passwords in this game. No, no. You don't get second chances. Yeah, see, the coins just fly all over the place. You don't, you don't get second chances here. You lose all your lives and all of your health, that's it. You're done. You have to start the entire game over again from the very beginning. Yeah, it's one of those old school games. So yeah, I'm playing pretty conservatively here. Jet. <laughs> this is not fun. Oh. Whoo! Whoa! Blowing fuses, fan blades, coins all over the place. This place is nuts, dude. All right, let's trigger that one early, so I just don't have to worry about getting hit by it. Wait for this to climb up. There we go. Okay. Now, there's actually a secret hidden off to the left here, and it's one of the only ones I discovered during my personal playthrough. Just run like hell! You'll hit the checkpoint on the way, and up here you'll find an extra life. And you're going to need that thing here in a second. You'll see what I mean by that in a bit. Now, notice how these platforms sink if you stay on them too long? You need to sink down on this last one to be able to make that jump! Whew! Crisis averted. Forgot those were there. Okay. This fan. Just... I just... Okay. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Jump! Woody! Okay. Wait till those platforms are at the top of their apex before you jump so that the timing is good is working for you. See, you're jumping at the platform as they're coming back down again, which is the only way you're going to make it up, because they're all on the same exact thing. If I try to jump while they're up, I'm not going to make it. But if I jump while they're down, or at least coming down, they move under my feet, basically. That's how that works. This truly is an old-school platformer if you need to apply mentalities like that. Okay. Holy cow, that's an exacting movement. Run, Woody, run! Run, Rex, run. Oh, boy. Okay, we're almost home free. We just have a couple of fans we need to deal with. If I can get through this stage without dying... Well, I think I already died once, but... I can get through this without dying again. That'd be amazing. Okay. Oh... You clench every time you go by one of these things. Okay. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Okay. Okay, one more. Did I make it? Did I make it? Yes! Woohoohoohoohoo! And a perfect 50 stars too, so I got a hat for that. Ooh! Strangers from the outside. And there's your fan favorite characters, ladies and gentlemen. So the thing is, um, there's another little scene here where these guys, where these aliens are going to send you inside the claw machine to try and find some of their friends. This stage is super easy once you know what to do. So I'm going to show you what to do. And you ever play uh, Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo? Well, if you have, get ready for some Mode 7! Yeah, I was... This blew my mind. I thought this was so cool. I, I didn't know there were so many companies that took advantage of something like this. I mean, don't get me wrong. By today's standards, this looks very primitive. Like, 
I don't know if anybody else remembers this. There used to be this like screensaver for old Windows computers. It was a 3D maze. And I use the term 3D very loosely because all of the walls were very clearly made of 2D images like this. It was like the most rudimentary of 3D graphics. It was kind of like Technodrome, if you will. What was it? That game where you shot the pterodactyls? It's almost Tekken 2 level shit. No! I think... I think even Tekken 2 had better 3D graphics than this. Or... Oh, I'm sorry. Not Tekken, Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter, that's what I was Hello. trying to say. Wow, you can tell I don't play fighting games at all, do can't you? I don't have anything against them, I swear. It's just not a genre I really fell in love with when I was a kid. I think the earliest I ever played a fighting game was against one of my cousins. He actually had Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo. It's also through him that I found out about the Star Wars games back in the day. Um, that's another thing I didn't get to for a long, long time. <laughs> Just because it was so frustratingly difficult. But I was really off-put by the game because he was so much better than me. And you gotta understand, everyone in my family is extremely competitive. Hello. It's just in our blood. We don't like to lose. I intentionally try and stay away from tournaments because I know I'm gonna lose my temper once I get my ass kicked. Alright. Remember how I was saying the two hardest levels in the entire game were in this area? This is it. This is the hardest thing you will ever do in this game. And once you see what it is, you will understand why. You have to fight the claw. Remember that second move I talked to you about where you move the whip up at an angle? What you have to do is you have to whip up the aliens with your normal whip, like that. But if you try and whip them again, it doesn't do anything. And so the claw will just kind of fly off with buzz. What needs to happen in here is that you need to whip these aliens up and then fire them using the up whip at the claw. Now, if this thing gets away with buzz, it's going to... This thing will try and grab buzz. You know it's Sid on the other side of that glass trying to grab buzz and try and get him out of the machine. The claw also hurts you, by the way, which is why I constantly have to duck underneath it. And the thing is, this claw takes multiple hits as well, so you need to shoot. You need to be in a position and be prepared to shoot multiple aliens at it. The other thing is, if this thing grabs Buzz, there's no way you're gonna catch up to him in time, because it moves insanely quickly. Oh, jeez. Okay. It's a good thing I've been ready for it this whole time, otherwise this would have been nuts. And Buzz stays where he is. He does not move. So the more that thing drags him, the easier it'll be to just instantly die on this stage. No, 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 no! Damn it! I made one mistake and it cost me the whole thing. Now I have to start over again. This battle is brutal, man. God, and they never teach you about the up whip. Like, you know to just use your whip. You figure that out normally, but this is a move that's essential to the entire game. And it's why I ragged on the help section in the first, in the first uh, video. Because if I had gotten a little help on that, had somebody told me... Okay, I... I'm sorry, I can't use that excuse. I always get mad at people when they do those kinds of things, because when they say something like that, because back in the day, video games came with these things called instruction manuals. You didn't have to make a tutorial in the game because you went through the trouble of printing a damn book explaining how to play the game. And it came pre-packaged with every single thing. These were standard. There's a reason you still find those little papers inside your games to this very day. It's because at one point they had a functional purpose. Oh shit, I am screwed. Uh, yeah, I wasn't winning that. There was no way I was gonna win that. And, oh, I just remembered this. Come to think of it. Come to think of it. There is actually a tiny bit of strategy here. You can use the claw to your advantage. And here's how. During the first movement, the first time this thing tries to capture Buzz, 
it will actually bring Buzz a little bit to the left before dragging him out of the machine. This is your chance to gain a little ground if you don't completely screw it up. Well, damn, that bit me in the ass. Like I said, I gotta be really careful here, because if I lose all my lives, that's it. I got I only had one continue, and if I and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to grab another one before I run out of lives again. Cause these later stages get insane. Insane. Insane in the membrane. Jeez, if I can just keep nailing it immediately like that, I might stand a chance. All right, this is the phase where he just goes straight for him? Nuts! Holy cow, dude. Okay. Okay, I gotta, I gotta work in a try-hard mode here. We've officially stopped playing games. Now it's time to take this seriously. Okay, on top of Buzz wasn't far enough last time, so let's move over here a bit. There we go. Now I've got a little leeway to work with. Even if he moves to the right a little bit, I'll still have some time to react to make up for it. All right, where are you coming from? Okay, come on. Just try and grab him. Try and grab him. I dare you. There we go. And you'll notice that, too. It doesn't actually take three hits to free him there. It takes one. But if you hit the thing too early, they won't really count. You'll just knock stars out of the claw. <coughs> there we go. Okay. Now he's approximately back where he started. Oh, right. This is the phase where he just goes straight for him. No. No, come on. Phew! Oh, ow! No, let go! Yes! Ha 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 ha! Victory for the Empire! Yeah, you, you earned that dance, Woody. Jeez. All right, I'm gonna call that an episode here, ladies and gentlemen. So next time on Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo, we're going to be covering what happens after Sid grabs. Both Woody and Buzz and gets them out of the claw machine, brings them back to his house. Until then, I'm What the Fnew, and I'll see you next time. Later, everybody.